What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Blackwater Podcast, or I guess we should call it the Truck Chronicles, because we're still without a podcast studio. Um, it's just, it's it's a matter of time. I'll get into that in a minute. But uh, today's episode is brought to you by Megalo, megalodeerfeed.com, www.megalodeerfeed.com. You can go there and pick yourself up a bag or 20. Um, it is our product. We do believe faithfully in the product. Um, took us 20 years to design that product of lots and lots of strenuous notes. We feel that it is the best attractant and supplement combination on the market to help attract, condition, and grow your deer herd or any ruminant um, for that matter. But uh, been using it, testing it for years. Works great on personal properties. Has worked wonders for my clients getting the animals they're after. We would love it if you guys would appreciate the product. And once again, you can get that at www.megalodeerfeed.com. Go pick you guys up a bag and grow you some megalos. A um, little on the weekend review. Uh, I don't know if you guys have noticed or not, but it is constantly raining here in texas in june woke up at the ranch the other day and it was 63 degrees outside and sprinkling in june don't understand it don't understand it at all um i hate to be this guy but i wish it would go away we were in the process of remodeling our house again um, my wife decided to do that four years ago and has now decided to just scrap it all and redo the whole thing now um, and so part of that is me getting a brand new office podcast studio. It's going to be freaking sick. Um, and Jancy and I have even talked about just starting over fresh, brand new name on the podcast, starting a new channel that just really focus on the pro podcast. I wish you guys would let me know your thoughts on that. Um, kind of what you'd like to hear us talk about, um, guests for that matter, who we should have on different stuff like that, because it can be open. It doesn't just have to be hunting or fishing. It can be whatever you guys want to <clears throat> hear us talk about, or you might drop down there and say, we don't want to hear you talk at all. Either way, it's probably not going to stop us. We're going to talk about something, but, uh, would love to have your input on what you would like to hear, uh, subjects or topics over, uh, from that aspect. But that is still delayed because of this rain. They can't get the exterior stuff done. So they haven't been able to start the interior stuff which absolutely sucks getting tired of it um wish they would get that wrapped up and done and um and let he and i get in there and really start doing this the proper way um don't know if y'all can hear it right now but once again it has started raining and uh here in the truck chronicles that is not good because you can hear it ding off the roof of the truck and it gets rather annoying while you're actually trying to uh, concentrate on what you're going to say next also a couple other things happened this weekend i did get to watch the texan maroon and white game and uh, hayes king looked great in that can't wait to see him get on the field um this this fall and and hopefully my ags will do pretty good in the in the college football run this year as well as last night i tuned in to the floyd mayweather versus logan paul match and uh, went about as expected. We all have hopes and dreams that somebody will get knocked out or that Logan Paul will get lucky and, and make Floyd 50-1, and one, which really couldn't have even happened because it wasn't a sanctioned professional fight. It was just an exhibition, but still would have been cool to see him get knocked out. Long story short, it turned out pretty much like every other match that is like that. They let you watch it for eight rounds and nothing ever really happens and then everybody comes out at the end and says who they thought won even though there was no judges to say who actually won and so it was pretty much a moot point i will say that uh in actual reality logan paul did better than i thought he would do i figured he'd go in there and look like a crazed maniac and uh and he actually i mean he threw a jab quite a bit and, and held floyd at bay for a little bit and he actually had decent conditioning i don't know how many people have have tried to actually box or do MMA or anything like that, but it is an absolute grueling cardio workout. And um, he, he survived eight rounds, and Floyd is just super fast. Um, but actually, could you could actually tell there in, in a few parts that Logan's body size and, 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 you know, pressure for a little bit was actually weighing on Floyd a little bit. So it was fun to watch. Uh, what does suck is that you would think, knowing – how many followers Logan has, how many people want to see Floyd box or Floyd lose or whatever it is, that there was going to be a huge turnout for the pay-per-view and Showtime absolutely crapped the bed on that. 
and uh, you couldn't even, I mean, if you were, I guess if you were hooked up to cable, you could get it, but if you were streaming, which like we do at the house, um, and expecting it to work through their streaming, their app, you know, their streaming service, it, it crapped out. You couldn't see anything. It wouldn't load. It wouldn't do anything. I'm real anxious to see how that works out. Um, if Showtime's going to give people that were trying to watch it through the streaming service, that are going to give them their money back. If you're just going to have to eat that, I mean, it was 50 bucks to watch it. And, uh, and there you are stuck with nothing, having to try to watch it illegally on TikTok from somebody filming their cable screen at their house. So, I'm <clears throat> not sure how that's going to work out in the long run, but, uh, and I was also kind of wondering, how does that affect uh, Floyd and Logan's money? So, you know, I mean, if if everybody comes out and is like, hey, look, Showtime, you suck at, at what you actually do, and we all want our money back, and um, whether it's a, you know, a lawsuit or, or they just make a company-wide decision to say we got to refund these people's money that paid for it but didn't get to watch it, does that affect how much money... Floyd Mayweather and Logan Paul actually take home because I know that was a big like for Logan he got like 250,000 guaranteed for the fight but then he was going to receive I want to say 10% of pay-per-view buys um, and so you know you got to figure in today's day and age a ton of people bought it um, who use a streaming service to watch it and if that didn't work and they give the money back did you know is he going to capitalize on the amount of money that he actually probably could have got? Or is is Showtime just going to have to pay up anyways? And, and I think the other one was Fan, Fanmeo, Fan, something like that. Uh, there was another service that was offering that you could buy the fight through. It apparently was sucking also. Um, but just kind of wondering, how's, how's the money work out on that situation? I imagine Floyd is going to figure out how to get his money because that seems to be the name of his game. He always figures out how to make money on these things. But um, wondering if that's going to be a just the Achilles of Showtime and is something like that, does something like that have the power to put a company that big under? So I guess we'll all see in the next few days how that, how that plays out. I could tell after the post-fight interviews and stuff like that that the fighters weren't really... Um, they didn't really know about it. Floyd kind of got like, you know, how he is. If you ever watch him get interviewed, he's very braggadocious on himself. And so he kind of took it as a point of saying he's so great and so popular that he broke Showtime. Unfortunately, um, that is where his money was coming from. So if the product that you're making your money off of is broken, are you still able to make your money? Um, at which point I see him getting very pissed off about that. So I would expect in the news to see something uh, coming from that pretty soon. Um, and I'll get to today's topic here in a minute, but you know, I'm, I, I've kind of, I get burnt out just talking straight hunting sometimes because one, there's not a whole lot of people that watch it Two, Um, you know, we're all into different things and the hunting world is extremely popular, especially in my world, because that's all I do. Um, basically is, is stuff to do with the outdoor industry, but, uh, there is life outside of that. But, um, in other news, new things on YouTube that I've found lately, and this is, this is pretty cool. I don't know if you guys have seen this or not. I'm sure you have, uh, because it's been all over Facebook lately, but it's a company called Hunt Wars, Hunt Wars, W-A-R-Z. Um, pretty cool. They got a whole series on YouTube. Their season one is right now, I guess it's nine episodes long. Um, but basically what it is, um, and I kind of jumped the gun on it. I, I wish I would have done a little more reading into it before I tried to participate. However, cool concept. Not sure exactly how they get away with it, but concept is you pay a hundred dollars to sign up and that's, um, you know, you can have one partner. So I would, whatever, sign up, pick Jancy as my partner or however that is. If you get drawn, um, they have different hunts that you go on and you compete against another two-man team so in their first season they did they've got like a couple elk hunts a couple mule deer hunts something like that and it's like two verse two one shooter one caller uh each group has a cameraman with them the hunt's completely paid for uh, i'm not sure if they pay for your tags or whatever you might have to buy your own tags but um you know the place you're going to they give you different types of apparel and gear uh, they feed you while you're there and it's a competition, and the winner gets um, 
don't quote me on this 100%, but I want to say it was like 10,000 bucks or $10,000 in gear, something like that uh, is how it worked out. But anyways, awesome, awesome design, awesome setup. They've done a fantastic job filming it too. So the videography and the editing of it is, I mean, it's top notch, better than anything you're watching on the Outdoor Channel or Sportsman's Channel right now. <clears throat> um, and, and a really cool concept. However, I did look further into it after I'd already paid my $100. And, um, and I did notice that it, you know, when you think you're going into it with fair odds, it's actually one of those cases where um, you can buy as many entry fees as you want to. Um, and so, you know, if you're a guy that's got, you know, 20 or $2,000 to spend on something like that, you can put in 20 times and your partner can do the same and you got 40 entries, whereas a lot of people are probably just thinking and putting in one time or two times you know once for them and, and then their partner puts in once also but um didn't didn't see that before i saw some comments come up on facebook and then i actually dove into their faq page and noticed that you can enter as many times as you want with as many different partners as you want um kind of brought me to the situation kind of like with the facebook raffles and stuff like that if, if it's a raffle and you're not a 501c3 nonprofit, exactly how are they getting away with it because it's not like you're getting anything for your hundred bucks it's simply a, a chance to win that hunt and be on the show so it's more of a sweepstakes and i do know in texas not sure about other states but i do know in texas that is actually illegal to do that um, to host raffles and stuff like that without being a nonprofit. and even in the case of being a nonprofit, there are certain stipulations that you have to abide by and only certain or only so many of those raffles um that you can run each year so not sure how they're getting away with that i'm <clears throat> i'm sure they're uh they have a loophole or they're doing it legally or whatever but um either way very enjoyable to watch on the tv or phone either way it's on youtube so it's very enjoyable to watch it's a cool concept something that i would love to be a part of um you know if they're doing it legally or not, I don't really care. I'd love to go on an all-expense-paid hunt with a buddy of mine and try to beat another team. I think the competition aspect of that is is very cool, um, and I think that could spin off into a lot of other things. Um, and so it kind of reminded me uh, almost of like the uh, Major League Fishing that you see on TV, you know, where you got guys out there competing against each other that are in uh, separate areas and, and kind of a winner takes all deal. So really cool concept. I liked it. You guys can check it out on YouTube. Hunt Wars, W-A-R-Z is how you spell wars in that. Hunt's obviously spelled H-U-N-T just like it normally is. Um, and they do have, um, they've got one elk series completely done. They've got one mule deer series completely done. And they're kind of partially into um, this newest elk series in season one. Uh, they are taking applications for season two right now. And I think there's a couple extras coming up in season two. So they're going to have like some, uh, some pronghorn hunting. Uh, so they'll, they'll obviously still have the mule deer. They'll have the elk still. Some of them are archery. Some of them are rifle. They're going to have a couple uh, pronghorn antelope hunts. And then they are going to have two duck hunts also uh, this year. The waterfowl hunts also this year. So that's pretty cool if you're into that. Not a big waterfowl guy. So I wouldn't apply for that. Not that I think you can pick because when I applied, it didn't say which hunt do you want to be a part of. Um, so I guess, I mean, if I was, did get selected and got stuck with the waterfowl hunt, I would dang sure do it and get my butt kicked, but I would still participate. Um, but then again, uh, like I was saying, there's a lot of cool stuff on there. You guys should definitely go check that out if you're looking for something new and different to watch on YouTube, because that's pretty much where I watch my TV now, unless it's a Netflix series or something like that, I've completely gone away from the Outdoor Channel and the Hunt Channel and the Pursuit Channel and the Sportsman's Channel and whatever other channels people are starting on Roku and this, that, and the other, just because it's it's the same stuff over and over and over again. A guy sitting in a tree, a couple B-roll, looks at the camera, big buck, big buck, big buck, makes a marginal shot, says he smoked him goes to look for him decides let's wait till tomorrow comes back the next day oh the deer must have just died right there here's a stiff deer take a couple pictures hero shot on the camera thank you to my 9450 sponsors roll into the next show with a different host doing the exact same format 
so that's that's got extremely old over the years. Um, with the exception of a few guys, you know, I do enjoy watching Tim Wells and Relentless Pursuit and some of the goofy stuff he does, and and um, I do like uh, Jim Shockey's Uncharted. Just getting to see different cultures and stuff like that, I've I've enjoyed that over the past. But those are probably my two favorite to watch. But other than that, it gets it gets old seeing a different character play the same story over and over again. It's almost like it's almost like the outdoor channels have turned into the Hallmark channels for hunters. I mean. I don't know if anybody else feels that way, but I feel exactly like that. My wife watches, you know, Hallmark or, uh, what's the other one? Uh, there's another women's channel. Hallmark's more like Christian base and Christmas stories and lovey and stuff like that. And the other one, I can't think of what it's called, but it's more like murder mysteries and gets a little raunchy sometimes, but neither here nor there. They're all the exact same story of, you know, girl meets guy or guy meets girl and they're not in their league and by the end of the show they've fallen in love and live happily ever after same thing happens in our hunting shows non-stop same thing guy finds deer falls in love with deer figures out a way to kill the deer because he walked underneath his tree stand waits till the next morning to go find him big buck down lots of pictures here's my sponsor um anyways Getting into what the topic of today was, and I'm not going to hammer it because I do I do feel like I like this new podcast style where I'm just touching small subjects, giving tidbits of my thoughts or takes on the information and, and moving on. But um, And I haven't done these in a while, obviously. We did get uh, super busy. I've got a bunch of stuff going, and I hate that I'm not consistent with these podcasts, but I promise you once Jancy and I start this new one that we're going to be super consistent about it and and take it you know we're not going to take it lightly we're going to do it for real and have the actual setups and everything's going to be clear and crisp and and done the right way and, and proper but um this is like in these truck chronicles just like that i put my foot up i hit the freaking seat lever and i'm zooming down um to where i don't know this is uncomfortable and it sucks but we're going to keep going <clears throat> anyways Today's topic was Texas public hunting land. A lot of people are, are getting upset about, you know, I mean, the prices in Texas to hunt private land are high, are high. They're extremely high. I mean, really freaking high. To the point where there's a lot of stuff that I sell that I do that I, there's there's no way I could afford to go and do that if I wanted to go do that by myself. Um, the access market has gotten out of control. Um, you want to shoot a big, nice buck nowadays on a good three-day two-night hunt you're looking at anywhere from 35 to 45 hundred dollars i saw the ox ranch the other day for a three-day two-night hunt lodging in mills um one axis buck five thousand dollars five thousand dollars i saw that the other day and they posted a picture uh with measurements a girl shot a 28 inch buck it was a beautiful buck there's absolutely nothing wrong with a 28 inch buck it's a beautiful buck it had great brow times it had good coddle times 28 inches is not bad as far as main beam length, it looked like it probably would have scored pretty average. It was a really, really pretty buck, and it was awesome that the girl got to take it. But it was $5,000 for a 28-inch buck. Um, and so, you know, the market has just exploded. And I would love to say, oh, don't worry, it's all going to come back down. But I've guessed that for the past four years that it would start coming back down. And every single year, it has gone up and up and up in price to the point that now what I was selling axis hunts for um two years ago i cannot buy you know replacement cost i cannot pay a landowner the retail price from two years ago for a hotel a wholesale price today um and so a lot there are a lot of people and i've we've got a ton we're 87 percent repeat client um 2020 from 2019 and uh you know, and I've got quite a few clients that, I mean, they're not mad at me about it, but they do joke around about it and get, get upset or even tell you, you know, look, I just can't afford to spend another 500, 700, a thousand dollars to come do the same hunt. And I get it. I completely get it. But, um, at the same time, I can't afford to run a hunt for negative profit. Um, and so it's kind of put everybody in a weird basket. Um, but I will say this, there's still, I mean, we've sold, we sold out for access this year. Uh, one of my ranches, we don't have an opening till 2023 um, for access on it. Um, and and so it's not like the hunters are going away. I mean, people are still paying the prices. It's just if you're one of those guys that, that 
definitely needs it you know in that two thousand dollar or less range your your days of of going after access in that price range are i'm, I'm not going to say they're over because somebody will prove me wrong and find somebody that'll let you come do it but on average you're going to have to needle in a haystack that to be able to find it and do it um which brings me to the point of public land that people were talking about on facebook and and uh and you know some people were getting mad over and some people were trying to show them you know, here's this and this that, that you can go do. And there is, I, th I believe there's a little over a million public hunting acres uh, in the state of Texas. Um, we've got, you know, we do have some national forest <clears throat> that you're allowed to hunt. We've got a lot of core, and core of engineer properties, your lakes, a lot of those properties um, you can get passes to hunt on. We've got some stuff like out um, Lake Amistad where they have those five tracks out there where you can buy a permit to go hunt out there for the year with your archery equipment um, at different times. And then we have the WMAs and the draw system in Texas, which people get mad sometimes when I bring up the draw system because it's like it's supposed to be this big secret that nobody else knows about until you actually dive into it and you start looking and see that there's thousands and thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people that apply for them every year. But it is a cool system. And, uh, and I would um, advise you guys to go to go check that system out. There's hundreds, literally hundreds of hunts on that system where it's set up kind of like it is out in the western states where you apply for a tag and if you get drawn you pay trespassing fee or whatever. Um, there's a little lightning and thunder for you guys while you're doing this awesome Truck Chronicles podcast. But um, pretty much all of them with the exception of a few are three dollars to apply um and if you get drawn um most of them i, I believe most all of them are underneath a 200 hundred dollar trespass fee um and there are some absolute freaking awesome hunts on there uh you got the nail guy hunts down in laguna As at a scotia Rot wildlife refuge um you've got different types of i mean we've got great mule deer in the state of texas and there's a few on there um, I'm going to save myself and some of the guys a little bit and, and not give away some of the some of the better spots because, yeah, I do believe you ought to go and do some research on your own and try to figure it out. That's part of the fun. Um, but there are some absolute bomb spots on there to go take giant mule deers. I'm talking 180, close to 200 type inch mule deer in the state of Texas if you get drawn for one of those hunts. And you're paying, on those hunts, you're paying $3.00 entry fee and if you get drawn it's a hundred and thirty dollar trespassing fee um so it's absolutely nothing to go do those and a lot of them allow you to put in um four people three to four people some of them are two some of them are four on your same tag so you you go and get drawn and you and your buddy can go um or you and three buddies can go so it's a really cool deal they got those they got tons of whitetail they've got Quite a few areas um, in the hill country region where if you get drawn, you could possibly get yourself an exotic. So those guys that are looking for Axis or Black Buck or wherever. Um, I know that Kerr Wildlife Management area, they had, um, they've got all kind of stuff on that, on that place if you get drawn. Uh, there's stuff way out in West Texas that 100% has elk herds on it. If you get drawn on that, you can get an elk. They've got the javelina. Some of those places have big awdad on them. You got a chance to to get yourself an awdad if you get, you know, like the uh, uh, some of the Del Rio stuff, like Amistad stuff. Um, some of the stuff way out in West Texas. Um, you got a chance for those big awdad. Then there's plenty of them that have white tail. We have um, three or four alligator hunts that you could get drawn on here in Texas. Um, they also have a bunch of good waterfowl stuff that you can put in. They have turkey stuff. And then they um, they also have the, um, I can't think of what they call them now, but they have the big hunts where it's, you get the bighorn sheep if you get drawn on that. Um, they have it where you can get on uh, a, a couple different particular specific, um, really nice, um, exotic ranches where you got a chance at a water buck or a gims buck and now they've got one that has sitatunga on it um so they've got some really cool stuff on there that you could be a part of and it's cheap to do are you going to get drawn every time no neither is neither neither do the people in in the midwest or western hunts or anything like that you know i mean that's part of 
putting in your time and, and doing it that way. There's still a lot of leases in Texas. Yeah, there's a lot of expensive leases, but there's also a lot of fair price leases for the market value today. You can go and get on one of those and, um, and have a good time doing it as cheap as possible and still being able to, uh, you know, possibly get yourself a doe or, or a decent buck or even a great buck. Um, but at the same time, you also have these opportunities to put in for these Texas draw hunts. If you just go to Google and type in TPWD draw hunts, it'll bring you to the exact page. You can fill out all the information. You can start applying on the, on the dates that they allow you to start applying. And then, um, you know, it'll also tell you when the draw results will come in and you can see if you win or not. Um, and so it's not a, it is tough draw odds, but it's not impossible. I had two buddies that don't even live in the state of Texas that put in for the nail guy hunt and got drawn their very first time. That doesn't happen for me. Jancy and I have put in for a long time now and haven't been drawn, but it's there. And, uh, and you do have the possibility to do that. And there are a few, you can check on there. There are a few that have what they call standby dates. Um, so if you put in for something and you don't get drawn and they have a standby, if you have time, you can drive up there and just go to the meetings and wait. And if they, if they decide that year they've got more deer or whatever than they, than they put in for people to apply for, they may draw a few more names. If they, if they call out the names of people that got drawn and people don't show up, they'll draw some names from the people that are standing by to replace that. And a lot of times that takes you, you know, down from, uh, a 1% chance, a less than 1% chance or whatever to get drawn to on the standby, sometimes you have a 10 to 20% chance um, of getting drawn while you're while you're standing right there. So pretty cool deal. TPWD draw hunts. You guys check that out. That could help out help out some people and I and uh, you know don't don't shoot me if you're a guy that thought that should be kept a secret. Um, it does help out with our conservation program in the state by having more people apply for that. And if we do get more people applying for it, maybe the state will come out and say, you know what, let's take a few more or open up a few more areas uh, to, to do these draw hunts on. So there's that. Um, as far as the future podcast, I touched on that earlier. Like I said, as soon as this stuff gets done and it's looking like hopefully they should have all my stuff done in September. Uh, so we will have the new office podcast studio, everything like that set up. And uh, we would love for you guys to drop in the comments below, um, you know, what you would like to hear on. Do you like the product reviews? Do you like when we, uh, you know, touch on different topics in the industry? Do you, would you rather us start looking into more of these people, you know, um, what's going on in the news and these people or how their companies are working or, you know, different stuff like that? Um, would you like us to try and interview some of those people? Um, and, and, and pick the brains of them. Would you like it focused more on the business of the outdoor industry? Or would you like us to talk about different stuff too? Mix in politics or mix in, you know, different world news or everything that's going on. Um, just get, just give us a shout on that. Some ideas that you think would be cool. What's, what type of podcast would you really like to see Jancy and I participate on? We did have a lot of people that, that told us they would like to see some more stuff for, as far as a mentor thing on, on how you do things, um, from, the actual hunting standpoint, spot and stalk type stuff, um, animal identification, plant identification, different, you know, how to clean animals, how to do this, that, and the other, uh, cooking stuff. And so we're, we're open to anything. Um, we've, we've been really blessed to get to experience pretty much all of it. That's what we do 300 days out of the year. Um, and so we would love to talk about that. We've done tons of traveling. He and I have hunted all over the U.S. and fished all over the U.S. together. And uh, so we do have quite a bit of experience in that and, and knowledge on those backgrounds and uh, try to be personal with other people. So we, we do have the ability to get some guys in to do some cool interviews and stuff like that. So you guys let us know um, down below what you would like to see. We would love to blow this thing up. And also what I would like you guys to do is drop in the comments below what you think the name of the new podcast should be. Like I said, Jancy and I want to start fresh on this. This is something that um, in in Blackwater, I am the owner of Blackwater. Um, and so Jancy has worked with Blackwater for going on seven years now. He is our head guide, but he does not have ownership in Blackwater. Um, this new podcast that we're trying to do, starting this new thing up, um, seeing how far we can take this, Jancy will have ownership in this. So this is something that you guys can really come on and support him into. Um, and I would love... 
Um, I love Jancy to death, and he has done absolutely nothing but wonderful things for myself, my family, our company. And so this is something that I would really like to see us. I'm going to put... I'm going to put my effort into it, man. I'm going to go all out on this thing, and he will too. And it's something that I would love to see blow up and for him to be able to provide um, something great for his family and his kids. He's got one son now. He's got a baby girl on the way. He's married, and, uh, you know, he's he's looking at, at, you know, growing something great for, for his family and, and passing down a great legacy for for his kids also and I think this is the way we get started on this and so just wanted you guys to know that he would be just as much a part of this financially as I would be and uh, I would love to see this grow and, and benefit he and his family as well and so if you guys have ideas on names for the podcast drop it below um, if you've got ideas on topics drop that below also and let's see if we cannot do this the right way blow this things up and uh, and just make it fun for everybody thanks again for tuning in I uh, love chatting with you guys. It will be nice having Jancy here or somebody here to interview so it's not just me talking the entire time, but we can bounce ideas back and forth off each other. But, like I said, drop those below. If you get a chance, run on over to www.megalodeerfeed.com, buy you a bag or 20, support the cause, and uh, let us know how it's working out for you guys. Thanks again for watching, and we will see you back here on the next one. Y'all take care.